Hey, all my stretching friends, welcome back. My name is Alex and today I have a goodie for us. We are going to talk about what age makes us too old to stretch, if there is any age past which we can't become flexible anymore and if stretching as a child or a young person really is easier or maybe we just have more time to do it because we have less other commitments in our lives. So to understand that, we need to look at a few different things. This is why I'm going to talk about what happens in our bodies when we stretch as the first thing. Then I'm going to talk about what happens as we age. Third thing we're going to look into is hypermobility and how that affects our flexibility and how you can figure out if you are hypermobile or not. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a conclusion based on all these things and based on my knowledge, as well as I also have prepared a few progression pictures that you can have a look at at the end to see how different people at different age progress when stretching. So let's just jump straight into the first thing we're going to talk about, and that is what is happening in our bodies when we stretch. So when we stretch, we don't only stretch our muscles. We also stretch our joints, which are made up of ligaments. And when we stretch our muscles, we don't only stretch the muscle, but we also stretch the tendon. And a tendon is pretty much what connects the muscle to our bones. And it is important to know that when we stretch our ligaments, we get more water in them. We also get a little bit more of an elastic type of collagen, as well as we actually get desensitized to pain. What exactly happens in our muscles is still something that we don't have a 100% answer for. For a long time, it was believed that we get a little bit more sarcomeres, which is the contractile unit in our muscle cells. So our muscles, they're a little bit complicated, but the simple thing is that we have these things and they're called sarcomeres and they're made up of two units. And when we're not doing anything, they're like this. And when we contract their muscle, for example, doing a bicep curl, they do this. And when we stretch, they obviously do the opposite thing. And the current theory is that we actually don't get any change to our muscles, so our muscles don't get longer. All that happens is that our brain allows these units to separate a little bit more. You might maybe be asking why on earth is our brain stopping this in the first place? And it does it because it is afraid of us getting injured. So all this means is that yes, our joints, they do stretch, but our muscles, they actually don't become longer in any kind of way. All that happens is that our brain kind of becomes okay with us all at once doing splits. Sounds crazy, I know, but this is what the current science says. So now as we know that, let's jump into what happens to us as we age. So when we are young, when we are children, we have much more elasticity in our bones and our bodies in general, just because our bodies are still growing and still shaping themselves. So for example, in our hips, we have a lot more cartilage. So not everything is super hard bone like it is when we're an adult. We have much more ability for our bodies to adjust to different positions and different types of movement. As a human, most of us are going to be fully grown at age between 15 or 16. Some of us grow for a little bit longer, but this is about the average. There are still things that are being developed, but at that age, we're pretty much the height we are going to be for the rest of our lives. And what this means is that stretching before the age of 15 is going to be much more efficient, just because we have more elasticity in our bodies. After age 15 and 16, once everything is fully grown and a little bit more fused, when it comes to our bones, things become a little bit harder. However, science says that we can actually change our bone density, the size of our muscles, all the way up until 80 and sometimes 90 years old, which means that our bodies, they actually adjust to the movement that we do. So just as lifting weights, if you start lifting weights at 20, you're gonna get stronger. The same at 30 and the same at 85. Your bone density is going to get better, your circulation is going to get better, and your muscles are going to grow. So your body is going to change, even though we're fully grown at 60. However, as we get older, you probably also know a lot of us get more stiff. Our ligaments and tendons shorten with age. Perhaps we've already had some injuries, so we have scar tissue on our muscles, on our ligaments, and all these things can slow down the process of stretching. As we get older, we are also very likely to get all sorts of different joint diseases and muscle diseases, but I'm not going to look at that just because that is a bit too deep of a dive to put in just one YouTube video. 
The important thing to know is that all these age-related things like ligaments getting shorter, muscles getting tighter, it can all be prevented with exercise. So you can really push all these effects really, really far back in your life if you stay active, take care of yourself and you eat well. So now as we have a tiny bit of an understanding of what is happening to us as we age, we're going to look at what hypermobility is and how it affects our flexibility. It is proven by science that people that are hypermobile, they have a little bit more of that elastic collagen in their bodies. And this is also why they find stretching a little bit easier and usually get a little bit better results faster than people that are not hypermobile. Which means that if you're hypermobile, you're in luck for flexibility because you're gonna find it easier. And if you're not, it's just going to be a little bit harder for you. Hypermobility is great for flexibility, but unfortunately, it also brings a bit more instability to our joints if we do other sports that are very high impact. However, on to the test. So to find out if you are hypermobile, you can do these five different movements here and you score yourself one point for each. So you can see the finger exercise and foot exercise, elbows, it's on both sides. So I will get one point for one thumb and then one point for my other thumb. If you score more than five as an adult and six as a child, it means that you are hypermobile. I have also linked a video in the description that explains this a little bit more if you would like to do the test. So if you are hypermobile at any age, it is going to make stretching easier for you. And if you're not, it is going to make it a tiny bit harder. So now as we know all these things, you probably have figured out the conclusion yourself already. But if not, the conclusion is that you can stretch and you can become flexible at any age. There's no physiological aspects that come with aging that will prevent you from doing it. However, it is important to understand that if we stretch at a younger age, the younger we are, the more elastic we are and the more our bodies can adapt to the movements we're doing. So it is going to be easier for us. However, as we get older, it doesn't mean we can't get flexible. And I know of people that have stretched in their 30s and 40s and have achieved splits, have achieved beautiful bridges. So it is possible at any age. I myself started at 20 years old and here you can see a bit of a progression of how I went. I am not hypermobile, I am super hypo-mobile, I would say. So you can even see that my knees, they don't even fully extend here. Same for my elbows and this is just a sign of me being ultimately stiff. So if you're super stiff, don't worry, you can become flexible as well. And the last thing I have for us is just a few progressions that I'm going to roll out now, just so you can get a little bit inspired and motivated to train your flexibility at any age. There is, however, one important thing to stretching when you do it as an adult, and it is important to understand what you're doing and knowing what you're doing, because it is easy to get injured and especially in our backs. So if you wanna know more about what is happening in our backs and our spine when we stretch and how we can make sure that we're staying safe when we do back bending, you can see my video right here. Thank you for staying with me this far. I would really, really love to hear what your stretching goals are, what age you started and how you have been progressing. So please let me know in the comments as I would love to learn more about you and your journey. See you next week.